If you think you've cracked the Living with Diabetes code by just increasing a unit of insulin after each extra cupcake you eat, then well, you are wrong. Yes, living with diabetes is challenging, but having a regular meal plan can make a huge difference. Today, I'll give you seven simple tips on creating a meal plan which will help you avoid blood sugar spikes and lows. Before we head any further, let me introduce myself. My name is Tara and I'm here to answer all your questions about diabetes and nutrition. I promise to make it easier for you. So let's get started. Okay, so here's the very first tip. Clear your concepts. Just skipping your favorite dessert or sugar in your coffee won't do the trick. Surprisingly, sugar is in many more foods than you may think. For example, white rice or bread. Simple carbs in these refined foods are also called sugars and they can increase your blood sugar just like any other dessert. Not only that, even fats can spike your blood sugar levels. Yes, too much fat can contribute to insulin resistance. So what you need to do here is clear these simple concepts. This will help you make better and more mindful decisions. The second tip is to put your routine on a schedule. Before planning your individual meals, you need to build a scheduled routine. Skipping meals and then overindulging can lead to sugar spikes and drops. This may also mess with your diabetes medication. For example, taking metformin without eating first can upset your stomach and lead to diarrhea. So set a time for your breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks in between and stick to that every day. The third tip is to keep your total calories in check. To prevent blood sugar fluctuation, you also need to calculate your total calories. The more calories you consume, the higher your blood sugar will be. Too much food, even if it's healthy, can cause a glucose spike. Your ideal caloric intake depends on your weight, height, and physical activity. But as a general rule of thumb, it is safe to limit your calories to 1,500 to 1,800 a day. This might help you lose weight too, which will allow you to control your blood sugar by reducing your insulin resistance. The fourth tip is to always count your carbs. Carb counting is an effective way to manage your blood sugar. This habit will also help your doctor set an effective dosage of your diabetes medication. What you need to do is simply count the carbs in each meal by reading the nutritional labels or using a carb counting app. You can even set your insulin dosage with carb counting. However, doing it without your doctor's help isn't recommended. Initially, your doctor will have to determine your insulin to carb ratio first, then recommend a suitable insulin dosage. Before moving to tip number five, I want you to listen carefully now. I know that diabetes management may seem overwhelming. That's why I strongly recommend checking out a personalized Clinio app, which will change the way you approach your whole diabetes routine. I'll put the link in the description below, so don't forget to check it out. Let's move forward. So my number five tip is to consume more fiber. Even if you limit your carb intake, it's still important to consume high fiber foods, such as lentils, barley, whole grain bread, vegetables, or fruits. High fiber foods tend to be filling and most have a low glycemic index. It means they can help manage your appetite and will have less of an effect on your blood glucose levels than other food options. The American Diabetes Association recommends that people over the age of 18 get 22 to 35 grams of fiber each day. So always choose brown bread and brown rice instead of white bread and white rice. Also go for whole fruits instead of fruit juices. The number six tip is to avoid processed food. If you are to go or fast food meal kind of person, it's time you change that. Processed foods are usually high in sugars and salt. As you already know, sugar rapidly increases your blood sugar. Salt may not increase your blood glucose directly, but it increases your blood pressure. People with diabetes are likely to have high blood pressure too, so it's better to keep your salt intake in check. The number seven tip is to use the plate method. A relatively easy way to manage your blood sugar is to follow the plate method. By using this specific method, you can create meals with a healthy balance of vegetables, protein, and carbs. You just need to follow these steps. Step number one, take a nine inch dinner plate, Step number two, fill half of it with non-starchy vegetables. Here you can see the list of recommended vegetables. Take a screenshot of it since you might need it later. Step number three, fill a quarter of the plate with lean protein of your choice, such as chicken, 
fish or turkey. If you're a vegetarian, you can have tofu, eggs, or beans. Step number four, fill the rest of the plate with carbs. If you religiously follow the plate method, you don't necessarily have to choose very fiber rich food. You can have rice, pasta, or bread. Keep in mind that potatoes, fruits, milk, and yogurt are also included in the carb portion of your plate. Okay guys, keep in mind that if you follow these simple tips, you'll keep your blood sugar in control and make your life with diabetes easier. Are you looking for super hacks to make eating with diabetes easier? Then you came to the right place, my friend. In this video, I'm gonna tell you about five diabetes hacks you should know about. I'll also break them down into smaller steps that will help you keep your diabetes under control. Hey, my name is Tara, and I'm here to make your diabetes management easier. Whether you have type one or type two diabetes, you might need to lose, gain, or maintain your current weight. But it's important to make healthier food choices while you're doing this. That's what I'm gonna talk about in my videos. But now, let's head to those special hacks I promised you before. So, my number one hack is choosing the right carbs. As you probably already know, carbs have the biggest effect on your blood sugar. Consuming too many or the wrong type of these nutrients can lead to spikes in your blood sugar. On the other hand, they're still necessary for a healthy diet. So the very first step into making eating with diabetes easier is to understand which carb options affect your blood sugar level the most. The best way to figure it out is to test your levels before and after your meals. This way you'll see which carbs cause the biggest spike and know which ones to cut out from your diet for good. The second step is to choose the healthier foods that contain carbs. I included some healthy sources you can see on this list. Take a screenshot and save it for the future. These carbs contain fiber and are less processed, which means they don't lead to dramatic swings in your blood sugar levels. Remember to stay away from refined carbs, such as soda, sweets, white pasta, white rice, white bread, and other processed foods. They can cause blood sugar to rise in no time. Let's head to my second hack, which is keeping a food diary or diabetes management app. Keeping a diary where you can track what meals you eat and what your blood sugar levels are is one of the best ways to learn how different foods affect you. Here's an interesting fact. One research shows that people who kept a food diary lost twice as much weight as those who didn't. Why? A written record helps you see your problem areas. It also increases your awareness of what, why, and how much you're eating, which helps you cut back on unhealthy foods. Okay, I know that logging your blood glucose levels Checking your carb, fat, and protein intake, as well as making sure you keep up with your medications and diabetes might become a full-time job. Plus, keeping a handwritten diary can seem inconvenient. That's why I strongly recommend checking out a personalized Clinio app, which will change the way you approach your whole routine and diabetes. I'll put the link in the description below, so don't forget to check it out. And yes, it's about time to hit that subscribe button on the Clinio channel. More great videos about diabetes management are yet to come. Okay, let's continue. The number three hack is going to the grocery store with a list. Make sure to make a list of what you need and stick to it. Replace your unhealthy carbs with alternatives that won't spike your blood sugar. Just a quick example, choose some carrots instead of chips. Pick some low glycemic fruits or nuts instead of candy bars. When you're trying to fill your basket with nutrient-dense foods while minimizing sweets, having and following a list can help you avoid impulse purchases. Also, if you're trying out new recipes, the list can help make sure you get home with all the right ingredients. Now, the number four hack, try using the plate method. Diabetes is not only about choosing the right foods, but also about eating them in the right portions. By using the plate method, you can create meals with a healthy balance of vegetables, protein, and carbs. Now you should follow these steps. Step number one, take a plate that is around nine inches across, draw an imaginary line down the middle of your plate. Then on one side, draw another line to divide that section in half. Your plate should have three sections. Fill the largest section of your plate with non-starchy vegetables. Here you can see a list of recommended vegetables. Take the screenshot of it since you might need it later. Step number three, fill one quarter of your plate with lean protein foods. You can choose chicken or turkey without skin, 
fish, lean beef or pork, low fat cheese, tofu or eggs. Step number four, fill one quarter of your plate with healthy unprocessed carbs. The good thing about this method is that you keep the balance of your nutrients, limit your carb intake, and keep your blood sugars from rising too high after meals. Okay, let's head to the number five hack, which is identifying your food triggers. This one is very important. I'm pretty sure that ever since you got your diabetes diagnosis, you often hear the same advice. Eat healthy, eat this, don't eat that. Yes, you need to be aware of what you're consuming, but sometimes such knowledge alone isn't enough. Many people, and probably including you, still struggle with cravings and overeating. If you want to create progress and lasting change by lowering your blood sugar levels, you need to start addressing the psychological relationship you have with food. That's why identifying your food triggers is a must. There are usually two to three emotions that trigger unhealthy food choices. Ask yourself where your cravings come from. Are you using food as a reward? Are you bored, tired, or stressed? Did you not eat enough during the day, causing you to overeat late at night? What's the underlying reason you're ending up choosing those sugary, fatty, and refined comfort foods? Once you're able to identify your food triggers, you'll be able to address the underlying issue and understand how to solve it. Don't be self-critical if you haven't been able to lose weight or lower your blood sugar levels. It's an ongoing process. I recommend taking a notebook and writing down all the struggles you had in the past with your diabetes management. Then underneath each struggle, write down how you'll prevent it from happening again in the future. This will help you put yourself on a track. I'm sure you can make it. When it comes to diabetes management, picking the right foods is essential. Eat the wrong things and your blood sugar levels will skyrocket. Eat the right foods and your levels will stay on track. So no need to wait, let's dive into foods that are the best and worst for diabetes. Before we start, my name is Tara and I'm here to answer all your questions about diabetes and nutrition. I'll try to make it as easy as possible for you. So let's get started. Okay, first, let's start with the worst foods for diabetes. The number one food on the list you should definitely eliminate from your diet is added sugars. That's a really broad food group that can be quite tricky, right? It's because added sugar is basically everywhere. Soft drinks, juices, granola bars, candies, sauces, salad dressings, cereals, and even in some yogurt. That's why I recommend paying extra attention to food labels when buying the product. Sugar has a lot of sneaky names that food manufacturers use. Okay, to make it easier for you, here is the list of sugar names that can appear in the ingredient list on packaged foods. Some food manufacturers will even use a couple of different kinds of sugar in a product, so it will have less of each kind. They usually list those sugary ingredients at the very bottom of the ingredient list, so always pay close attention to food labels. Also, if you wanna reduce added sugars in your diet, replace processed foods with whole foods, such as fruits and vegetables. The number two on our worst foods list are refined carbs. These are also known as processed carbs. What you need to know is that they are stripped of basically all fiber, vitamins, and minerals, which means refined carbs are often considered empty calories. They're also digested quickly, which means they lead to rapid spikes in blood sugar and insulin levels after meals. The main dietary sources of refined carbs are white flour, white bread, white rice, pastries, pasta, sweet desserts, and breakfast cereals. But keep in mind that not all carbs are equal. For example, fiber is a good carb and is highly recommended by the American Diabetes Association as a healthy part of the diet for diabetics. Before you continue, don't forget to subscribe to the Clinio channel so you don't miss out on future diabetes management videos. Also, check the link below this video for a 60-second quiz to evaluate your diabetes health state. Okay, now let's get going. The number three foods you should avoid are fried foods. Okay, probably most of you have a weakness for fast food, such as fried chicken, french fries, potato chips, donuts. No matter how good they taste, it should be a huge no-no for people with diabetes. Not only do fried foods soak up tons of oil, they also cause blood sugar chaos, leaving it high over a long period of time. To put it simply, fat takes a longer time to digest, so it keeps blood sugar elevated. I recommend finding new ways to prepare fried foods, such as grilling or baking. 
For example, I make baked fries in my oven and they taste so crispy, you'd think they were fried. So you get the drill, right? Okay, so you should avoid added sugars, refined carbs, and fried foods, or at the very least, minimize your daily consumption. Now it's about time to head to the good part, foods that are best for diabetes. The number one food on the list is leafy greens. These are packed with vitamins A, C, E, and K, as well as minerals such as iron, calcium, and potassium. So leafy greens are a powerful nutritional punch while being low in sodium, carbs, and cholesterol. This means they can be incorporated into numerous diets, including those for people with health problems like diabetes. If you don't know what vegetables fall under leafy greens category, check out this list and take a screenshot of it. Try to incorporate these veggies into your diet by adding them to some of your favorite dishes, such as salad, soups, or stews. The number two best food for diabetes is fish high in omega-3 fatty acids, or to put it simply, fatty fish. Omega-3 fats may help the risk of heart disease and inflammation that are common in diabetes. The American Diabetes Association recommends eating fish, mainly fatty fish, twice per week for people with diabetes. Which fish should you include in your diet? Well, salmon is the best known in this category, of course. Other options are trout, albacore tuna, mackerel, or sardines. Choose fish that is baked or grilled, add some nice leafy green salad on the side, and you'll have a proper and most importantly healthy meal. Now let's head to the third best food on the list, which is nuts. Okay guys, if you're looking for a satisfying diabetes friendly snack, it's hard to beat nuts. It's because they are the total super package, low in carbs, high in protein, fiber, and healthy fat. What's more, nuts create a great feeling of fullness, which will help manage food cravings during the day. The best option should be walnuts, almonds, peanuts, or pistachios. However, there are two things to be aware of. Firstly, nuts are high in calories, so portion control is key. Experts suggest measuring out one ounce of nuts. Secondly, avoid nuts that are coated in salt or sugar, and instead try dry roasted or raw nuts, which are healthy and really flavorful. You've been carefully choosing foods, exercising, and taking your diabetes medication, but your last blood glucose reading was still really high. Then there's a great chance your food choices haven't been as good as you thought. So today, let's discuss seven most common foods that can cause blood sugar spikes. By the way, if we haven't met before, my name is Tara, and I'm here to help you make better nutritional choices while managing diabetes. So let's get into it. The number one food on the list is instant oatmeal. Oatmeal is a popular breakfast option for most people. Steel cut oats are a great choice as they are rich in fiber and fiber helps slow down the absorption of glucose into the bloodstream. Well, as long as you control your portions, of course. However, instant oats are a different story. These are highly processed, which means they are digested faster and the blood sugar increases faster as well. Also, instant oatmeal often has added sugar and other ingredients, so it's a great possibility that you'll consume too much of them at one time. Choose the good old still cut oats instead. Add some fresh berries, nuts, or cinnamon, and you'll have a healthy breakfast option without spiking your blood sugar levels. Number two is fruit juices. Fruit juice is often considered a healthy option. As much as we think of fruit juice as healthy, they are primarily sugar. Its effects on blood sugar spikes are similar to other sugary drinks, such as Coke or energy drinks. And in some cases, fruit juice is even higher in sugar and carbs than any other sugary drink. As a general rule, eating whole fruit is healthier than drinking fruit juice or fruit smoothies. For example, a 250 milliliter glass of unsweetened orange juice typically contains around 100 calories, while an actual orange has only 60 calories. Again, the best alternative is to drink water with a slice of lemon, which has less than one gram of carbs and is calorie free. Number three on the list, flavored coffee drinks. There's nothing better than a cup of joe early in the morning, right? However, if you're a fan of flavored coffee drinks, you should understand that it's more like a liquid dessert rather than a healthy beverage. Flavored coffee drinks are also loaded with carbs. Even light versions contain enough carbs to significantly raise your blood sugar levels. Now let's take a peek at the Starbucks Cafe Vanilla Frappuccino. 
With ingredients like milk, sugar, and vanilla flavoring, you are gaining numerous empty calories. This means you're eating sugar or fats with basically no nutritional value. If you add some whipped cream into a 16 ounce size, you'll have around 430 calories and 72 grams of carbs. And this is far more than the person needs from a single beverage. Number four is honey, agave nectar and maple syrup. When people with diabetes try to avoid blood sugar spikes, they often try to minimize their intake of white table sugar, candies, cookies, and pies. And instead they choose honey, agave nectar or maple syrup. Now listen, even though these sweeteners aren't highly processed, they contain as many carbs as white sugar. In fact, most contain even more. Here you can see the list of the carb counts of a one tablespoon serving of these sweeteners. That's quite impressive, right? In fact, one study showed that people with prediabetes experienced similar increases in blood sugar when they consumed 1.7 ounces or 50 grams of white sugar and honey. Your best strategy is to avoid all forms of sugar and use natural low carb sweeteners instead, such as stevia. Number five on the list is foods containing trans fats. Trans fats are unsaturated fats that have been chemically altered to increase their stability. They're often added to products to extend their shelf life. Trans fats are found in margarine, peanut butter, baked goods, spreads, creamers, and frozen desserts. To avoid trans fats, it's important to read labels carefully. Don't eat foods that have any partially hydrogenated items on the ingredients list. And keep in mind that food companies can list zero grams if it contains less than 0.5 grams of trans fat per serving. This means your food may have trans fats, even if the nutrition label says zero. So the best thing you can do is reduce the number of processed foods in your diet. Number six, white pasta, rice, and bread. Once again, carbs are the nemesis of diabetes. White bread, white rice, and pasta should all be avoided if you have diabetes. These refined carbs are not only processed and have no nutritional value, but they also significantly increase blood sugar levels. Instead, try to pick a higher fiber option, such as pasta made from beans or lentils, brown rice, and whole grain high fiber bread. If you really enjoy the taste and flavor of white pasta and rice, then be mindful and try to choose appropriate portions. Also, Balance it off with high fiber veggies as a side dish. Add some lean protein too to minimize the impact on your blood sugar. Number seven is French fries. Those crispy fries are not only high in carbs that raise blood sugar levels, but they're also fried in unhealthy oils that may promote inflammation and increase the risk of heart disease. Potatoes themselves are already high in carbs. A medium white potato contains approximately 169 calories and 37 grams of carbs, while a medium sized serving of fast food french fries has 427 calories and 56 grams of carbs, and that's a lot. However, if you don't want to avoid potatoes completely, eating a small serving of sweet potatoes would be your best option. You might know that some foods can contribute to blood sugar fluctuations. But what about others that optimize blood sugar control while promoting overall health? Let's talk about that today. I'll give you the list of five foods that actually help lower your blood sugar levels and keep them on track. Before we start, you need to know about one very specific thing, and it's called the glycemic index. If you want to lower blood sugar levels, you should choose foods with a low glycemic index. It measures how quickly carbs break down during digestion, how rapidly your body absorbs them, and how quickly your blood sugar levels rise. The glycemic index divides foods into low, medium, and high GI and ranks them on a scale of zero to 100. Low GI foods are those with a score below 55. So remember, the lower the glycemic index number is, the less it affects blood sugar and insulin levels. Now that you know about GI, let's head to our top five foods list that doesn't let blood sugar levels spike through the roof. Number one, nuts. When you're looking for a satisfying, diabetes-friendly snack, it's hard to beat nuts. They are very rich in dietary fiber and have GI scores below 55. Nuts are high in fats, fiber, and protein, all of which increase the time frame required to break down and absorb glucose in the body. One study showed that people with metabolic syndrome who ate just under one ounce of pistachios twice a day had a 9% decrease in fasting blood sugar. That's quite impressive. 
However, it's truly important how you consume nuts. It's best to eat them raw without any coatings or additional flavorings such as salt. The best nuts for people with diabetes are walnuts, almonds, pistachios, and peanuts. Also, keep in mind that nuts are high in calories, so eat them in moderation. Experts suggest measuring out one ounce portion sizes instead of digging into an open bag. Number two on the list are leafy greens. Green leafy vegetables are full of essential vitamins, minerals, and nutrients. They're also low in glycemic index, which means they have a minimal impact on blood sugar levels regardless of how much you eat them. Some of the best leafy greens to incorporate into your daily diet are spinach and kale. They are basically a superfood since they are rich in fiber and have very high levels of vitamin C. Of course, there are more nutritious leafy greens you should include in your diet, so I put them on this list. Take a screenshot of it and save it for later. Try to incorporate these veggies into your diet by adding them to some of your favorite dishes, such as salad, soups, or stews. Okay, before moving further, don't forget to subscribe to the Clinio channel. We have so many videos about diabetes management ready for you, so I really don't want you to miss out. All right, so the number three on today's list is oatmeal. Including oats and oat bran in your diet may help improve your blood sugar levels because of their high content of soluble fiber. It has been shown to have significant blood sugar reducing properties. Oats have a GI score of 55 or lower, which makes them less likely to cause spikes and dips in blood sugar levels. Oatmeal can be a great addition to your diet while managing diabetes, especially if you eat them for breakfast instead of high carb, high sugar meals. And again, it's really important what kind of oatmeal you choose. The best options are old fashioned or steel cut oats. They contain a higher amount of soluble fiber and are minimally processed to slow digestion. What you really need to avoid is processed oats, instant oats, and cereal bars. These are highly processed, which means they are digested faster and the blood sugar increases faster as well. Our number four food is whole grains. I know that's a whole group of foods, but I simply couldn't not mention it. Eating a diet high in fiber is really important for people with diabetes because fiber slows the digestion process and keeps blood sugar levels stable. Whole wheat and whole grains are lower on the glycemic index scale than white bread or rice. Again, I put the recommended foods on this short list, so save it for later. Also, what you need to know is that finding whole grain foods in your supermarket can be tricky. Don't be fooled by food labels that say enriched. It means that enriched wheat contains only part of the grain. Also, look for whole grain as the first ingredient listed. Foods labeled containing whole grain, made from whole grain, or multi-grain may not be 100% whole grains. Likewise, pay attention to the food's color. For example, bread may be brown only because it contains added ingredients. The number five food on the list is yogurt. Yogurt is a fermented dairy product that may help regulate blood sugar. Research actually has linked its intake to improve blood sugar control. For example, one study showed that consuming five ounces or 150 grams of yogurt daily improved participants' post-meal insulin and blood sugar levels. Most unsweetened yogurts have a GI score of 50 or below. Remember that you should definitely avoid sweetened or flavored yogurts. A small cup contains around four teaspoons of sugar. And you'll agree, that's a lot. So always choose unsweetened or Greek yogurt and add some berries or fruits if you want some extra yet healthy sweetness. Did you know that nearly 59% of consumers have a hard time understanding nutrition labels? Food labels can be super confusing and understanding them correctly is especially important when you have diabetes. By the way, my name is Tara, and today I'll share three main tips on how to correctly read food labels. Watch till the end, since I'll also give you three lists of ingredients to avoid. Very often, food companies play dirty and use misleading tricks to convince consumers to buy specific products. So how can you accurately understand food labels? Let's get into it. My number one, ignore claims on the front of the packaging. Most front labels try to make healthy statements, such as, fat-free, organic, or all-natural, trying to lure you into purchasing the product. And that usually works, right? Actually, even research shows that adding health claims 
to front labels makes people believe a product is healthier. Here you can see the list of the most common claims on the packages you really need to pay attention to. Save it for the future and keep an eye out for such labels. Tip number two, study the ingredients list on the back of the package. The ingredients of the product are listed by quantity from highest to lowest amount. The first ingredient is what the food manufacturer used the most. For example, I always watch the first three ingredients because they make up the biggest part of what I'll be eating. So if you notice that the first ingredients include sugar, refined grains, or hydrogenated oils, put the product back on the shelf. These ingredients are a red flag and the product is not suitable for you. Also, an ingredients list that is longer than two to three lines shows that the product is highly processed. Tip number three, check the serving sizes. Serving size is the first piece of information listed on the label. This is the amount of food that is typically eaten at one time. And that's the tricky part because the serving size is not a recommendation of how much to eat or drink. One package of food may contain more than one serving. For example, if a package has four servings and you eat the whole thing, you get four times the calories, carbs, and everything else listed on the label. Many people don't really know much about this serving size scheme, thinking that the entire package is a single serving. These are the main tips that will help you read product labels correctly. Before moving forward, don't forget to subscribe to the Clinio channel. We have so many videos about diabetes management ready for you that I really don't want you to miss out on them. Also, check the link below this video where you'll find an amazing tool for managing diabetes. It's the Clinio app that offers a personalized meal plan, grocery list to make your shopping easier, no equipment workouts, a detailed progress tracker, and so much more. You'll definitely need to check it out. Okay, let's get back to reading food labels, where we're faced with the confusing part, ingredients to avoid. When it comes to specific ingredients, food manufacturers become really creative. Remember, most of them are trying to hide the real names of ingredients by changing them to more delicate yet confusing names. So I excluded two main ingredients to look for when buying packaged goods, sugar and industrial fats. Let's start with sugar. Sugar has tons of sneaky names. That's the game that food companies play when they call sugar different names. Consumers are more willing to buy the specific product. But if the label doesn't scream sugar, it doesn't mean the product doesn't include it. To make it easier for you, here is the list of what names of sugar can appear in the ingredient list on packaged foods. Some manufacturers will even use a couple of different kinds of sugar in a product so it will have less of each kind. Also, they list those sugary ingredients basically at the bottom of the ingredient list. Another thing to remember, sometimes special sugars are listed by their scientific name or as a natural ingredient like maple syrup. Again, I put those specific sugars in this list, so take a screenshot of it. Of course, you don't have to get obsessed with limiting sugar to an absolute zero, but remember, sugar is sugar. If you wanna be successful in managing diabetes and staying healthy, it needs to be limited in all forms. Another ingredient to watch on food labels is industrial fats. Trans fats are unsaturated fats that have been chemically altered to increase their stability. Trans fats are found in margarine, peanut butter, baked goods, spreads, creamers, and frozen dinners. Also, trans fats are often added to products to extend their shelf life. Don't eat foods that have any partially hydrogenated items on the ingredients list. Keep in mind that food companies can list zero grams if it contains less than 0.5 grams of trans fat per serving. This means that your food may have trans fats even if the nutrition label says zero. We want you to be safe and healthy. So here is a list of such fats that need to be avoided at all costs. Just don't sweat about small amounts of naturally occurring trans fats in whole foods like beef. I'm talking about the artificial trans fats you need to avoid. Hey everybody, my name is Tara and today let's talk about fast food and diabetes. That sounds like a surreal combo, right? But I'm here to tell you that fast food can actually be safe for people with diabetes. Today, I'll give you five tips on making the right food choices when you hit a fast food restaurant. Let's get started. Okay, so there is probably no need to say that when you have diabetes, you need to follow a healthy diet to manage your blood sugar levels. 
and you're well aware of the impact junk food can have on them. A meal from a fast food restaurant can pack loads of calories, sodium, fat, and carbs, making fast food harmful for a person with diabetes. But with a little bit of knowledge, people with diabetes can eat fast food once in a while without putting their health at risk. So let's see what tips I have for you. Tip number one, swap fast food for healthier alternatives. When ordering fast food, you might have the choice to swap fatty fried foods for healthier options. So always ask the staff if they offer such options. Now, what kind of healthier options should you switch to? Let's dig into that a bit deeper. Option number one, switching from fried to grilled food. For example, try switching to a grilled chicken sandwich instead of ordering a fried chicken sandwich. Also go with lean meats such as chicken, turkey, or fish. Option number two, swapping the bun with whole grain bread or using lettuce as the bun. Option number three, going with the healthy toppings. Avoid cheese, bacon, or mayonnaise. Instead, choose guacamole, avocado, or extra leafy greens. Option number four, swapping the sides. Choose side salads, fruits, and vegetables instead of french fries when available. For example, a small fruit cup contains 100 to 150 calories and almost half the carbs compared to a small pack of french fries. Now tip number two, pick places with healthy menu options. Today, many fast food restaurants have calorie counts on their menus and nutrition information on their websites. So it's always a good idea to check the menu options and plan your meals beforehand. If you don't see such an option, just ask if the specific fast food place has friendly options for people with diabetes or healthy alternatives in general. Also this way, you'll learn what fast food restaurants are a go-to and which might be a big no-no. Number three, downsize your meal. Okay, I know that ordering a supersized meal is always a huge temptation since fast food restaurants offer them at a really good price. Don't fall for that. You may save money, but this way you'll consume much more calories, sugar, fat, sodium, and carbs. When ordering, go for a small size and choose the side in the beverage yourself. For example, if you're used to eating double cheeseburgers, order a single patty burger with the salad on the side and plain water for a drink. Remember, when people are served more food, they eat more, even if they don't really want to. Tip number four, rethink your drink. It's easy to drink hundreds of calories without realizing it. I know that it doesn't sound like the most appealing option, but I strongly recommend ordering water instead of soda. When you swap sugary beverages for water, you avoid all these unnecessary calories and blood sugar spikes, as well as reduce the feeling of hunger more effectively. Tip number five, don't go if you are overly hungry. When you are really hungry, you're more likely to make unhealthy food choices and of course, overeat. Always try to have a healthy snack, such as fruits or vegetables before hitting the fast food place. This way, you'll also have extra time to plan your order. All right, so you can always use these tips while making decisions at fast food restaurants, but I strongly recommend talking to your healthcare team that knows your condition and can suggest the best food options.